asked. And uh, what I have done is I've asked uh, Representative McConkie to oversee this this process for us. I could have been head or anybody, because I think we're all after the same thing. We're all after <coughs> getting at the bottom of this and see what we can provide as answers for people. And uh, based on your experience and being on on it uh, such a long time, I think it was appropriate. You know, the history is much longer, much better than I do. So I turn it over to you. Sir. Thank you. And I appreciate the kind comments. The um, I can pull some things together here. Excuse these, me, are these, these yours that I picked up? These are. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry, I picked it up too. Yeah, that's all right. Um, these, Lena, you have a copy of this. These I, are these are documents. Trying to get the documents in the same format, and there's um, there's several copies there from um, the nursing home and the business office so that we can see transactions back and forth between the two. And I'd ask Kathy Gary to supply us with uh, a bunch. Do you have those? There's, a, there's an end point here. And yes, yeah. there's wrong. four I think pages there's of January. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And I don't know that uh, we'll have time to run through those, but they're background info. And Paula had sent information uh, also that I think I shared with you folks a couple, three days ago. And those journal entries? Yeah. Journal entries. Those I could print out, this I could not. So thank you for Yeah. Printing. Well, it originally came to as an Excel and then asked Kathy just to reformat it and that. So hopefully it'll be easier for you to follow along and see where we're at. And there's probably an extra ones I can feel free to have. All right, so this one is January through March of 15. This is January through December of 14. Yes, okay. And you were kind enough to take minutes last time, huh? It was. It looks like you're going to be kind enough again. <laughs> did everyone see the uh, minutes that uh, were distributed by email? From I did not see it. I cannot see it. I can give you this copy. Do you want to review that quick while I'm looking over a few things and then we'll call for a motion to accept the uh, minutes as distributed? Okay with the minutes as distributed. Okay, so motion to accept. Uh, second in. Second. Okay. Motion, motion made and accepted. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. I had a conversation with um, Chairman Umberger um, yesterday, I believe it was. And perhaps we can start with those questions that she had first. I think it's relative to where we are. And um, Howard or Paula, who'd ever be more appropriate to uh, answer. The auditors um, a couple weeks ago had highlighted um, that there were um, a large number of uh, uncollectible debts that they wanted to write off in excess of a couple million dollars. And I know, Paula, that you had looked, you were finally, you weren't asked an opinion of that, mm -hmm. and then were forwarded a list, and you were of opinion that uh, not all of that was not, was uh, for a lost cause, and that was, had a chance of being collected. Could you bring us up to date on that? Correct. What we did was he wrote everything off from December of 2013 back. Well, that's not, I'm still collecting on things, some things from 09. Um, as I explained last week in the commissioner meeting, we've had people that have come in 
that had been private pay, their money runs out, their lapse in filling out their Medicaid application. So there's a couple months that no one's paying because they didn't fill out an entire process. What I can do after they're on Medicaid is do a liability adjustment, which means instead of using their Social Security to pay for a current month, it pays off their back balance. Well, when you only get $500 a month, that takes many, many months to pay off three months of private nursing home care. So I have a few of those on the books that are older, um, and I have a few claims that when Medicaid switched over their system, we got a new billing system with Medicaid claims that were bouncing back that are from prior years that I'm still working with Medicaid on getting. But they never, the auditors never came to us and said, can you go through this and tell me what you're working on collecting and what you know you're not going to collect. So I went to Jesse and I said, can you send me what you did? So he sent me his report, which I am in the process of going through to mark off what I'm still collecting on and what is definitely, okay, that's a write-off. It was rejected or whatever from Medicare, Blue Cross, whoever. So that's where I'm at. I'm working with Jesse, so to speak, on telling him what I feel is collectible or not. Did I hear uh, in a conversation earlier that half of that money you believe is, is going to be collected? Have you gotten to a point where you have some idea of what that is? Since last week, no. <laughs> I mean, I, it's going to take me a while to go through. It's 120 pages of reports. So. Okay. Do you, but yes, I, that's my project is going through that. Do you feel that we will have a handle on how much we're going to collect or in the process of collecting ahead of um, August 15th? Yes. That should give me plenty of time to go through what I need to. <clears throat> and how soon? Can you have it? <laughs> I mean, I I will work on it as much as I can, and but obviously I have current thing to keep oh, current. But I, you know, well, all right, I won't. I'll just do it. no. Um, but yes, I will. I mean, that's definitely on my top of my list to go through. Do you have a sense of when you, you know, will be able to? Completely no. What I'm what my plan is to go year by year. So we had, I think, in the commission meeting, decided that anything from 2008 prior. That's fine. We can write that off. It's roughly three hundred and fifty-five thousand. Roughly, it comes out to roughly forty-four thousand dollars per year for eight years. Um, so then I'm going to take from '09. I'm going to go because I can print out by year. So I'm going to print out each year and mark off by each year what we're getting. So, so, so. You've come to an agreement with the commissioners that you're going to write off at least three hundred and fifty thousand. I believe that month. was yes. In the meeting, we had pretty much said anything from two thousand eight. Because I, I know I don't think there's anything from two thousand eight. I know I have stuff from two thousand and nine that are in that liability process of you know getting monthly payments on. But I feel pretty confident from from all eight back is. The, the reason I brought up August fifteenth, mm -hmm. I should probably explain that is. Um, we are going to, as my understanding, be right down to the crunch with uh, the tax rate and what's, what it's going to cost. And then at that time, if it looks like we're not going to collect that, then we may be forced then to put that money in to cover that. So that's, that's why I had thrown out August 15th. And I think Ed's concern is the same of all of ours, that the sooner we can, we can know that, the better. Right. Oh, I agree. I Yes. What, what's the history of this? This happens every year. It's been happening for years that you there's debt that you can't collect from three or four years ago. Right, or we're working. We've never had. I don't think. I don't. I can't recall the last time when we had an audit that they came forward with write-off figures for us. I know the other counties, um, I, specifically one that uses Ron Blue, that they had the same thing happen to them, and they had to do a two million dollar write-off for four years of revenue. And they're writing off three hundred thousand dollars a year. So, and I don't think they had done it before either. It was that auditing company took over? They said, "All right, well, we're going to write these off your books, and we're going to start fresh." And I know the other counties put in annually for write-offs. They have a line in their budget for bad debt with a figure for them to use. We've never had that. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. I. Uh, went over and looked at Hillsborough County, mm -hmm. their financial statements, yep. and they have uh, revenue 
$20 million a year or something right. in their nursing home. They write off um, in their financial statements about 150000 a year. Right. Hillsborough is a, they, they're, they make a lot of money at Hillsborough County. I know that Bruce Moorhead said he, he makes a lot. I haven't checked the other counties. I've just talked to Stratford. Um, and I know, I think, Howie had talked to someone at Grafton, and they do a write-off. I don't know how much theirs is, but, yeah, Hillsborough makes makes good money. Right. I, I just home. thought it was interesting, the amount of their write-off compared to their revenue. I think they have a lot of skilled, maybe. I don't know. I know they have 300 and something beds. So they can they have a lot more revenue to generate than us. But you figure, what? how much did you say their revenue was? Uh, 20 million, I believe. 20 million, so it's double R's and they have triple R beds. So, David? Well, I was just going to say, all the years that I've been here, I'm not an accountant, and I'm willing to bet probably Mark's been here as long as I have fell into the same. I always assumed that what we had for revenue on the, on the nursing home page was what we had in the bank. It never dawned on me that it was what we built not what we received. For all these years, we've been thinking that we we saw 12 million, that's what we had collected and put in the bank. Well, that's not what happened. Right. That, I, I agree. The, so, new accounting practice, well, we're, we're catching up on audits, new right. accounting practice, and it's there, they are looking to write that off. You think that we're not gonna have to write off as much, and is, is the amounts that we're seeing being written off, do you have any feeling if that's been historical going right along, or is this something new that happened over the term of 2013-14? No, um, it's been, like I said, we just never, they've never, the auditors have never come forward and said you should write these off. They've just always come, did our audits and left, and we just... Yes, sir. Um, of our current population, um, okay, so maybe then for the last year's budget, um, the one that we finished, how much, what's a percentage of bad debt? And, and define what bad debt means. The percentage, I believe the auditors are going to do historic, when they finish our audit, see what it roughly comes out to for all the years they've done, and then they'll do a percent, they'll do that. But Whether it's 85 cents on the dollar, or yeah. whatever they think we're collecting. But for 2014, you have people who were private pay who turned into Medicaid. Um, were there many private pays that we lost uh, uh, income on that didn't pay for their for their beds? No, most of your bad debt is going to come from insurance companies. Okay. Claims that have been rejected, that kind of thing. That's where most of your bad debt's coming from. Okay. And it's it's late Medicaid or Medicare, but um, for the most part, it's just pursuing insurance? Right. Now, Mr. Chairman, if I yes. might, Please. the difficult time for the auditor is getting this started. Once it's going, it'll be okay. In an auditor's mind, anything over... Anything, and he's looking at 365 days, you know, if you have accounts receivable, in the real business world, you write it off. Well, we have tails that go back two or three years. Doesn't mean the auditor has a dilemma, so he has to do something. Some of that can be restored in future years going forward. But we really don't have, we have write-offs, but we don't really have bad debt issue. It wouldn't surprise me if we're about 98% of our collections. Grafton gets to be about that. We don't, it's going to be, like Paula says, adjustments, but it's not, I don't want anybody to think there's somebody out there that's not paying. It could be that they're paying $200 a month and there's still an outstanding bill. That's still, that's not bad debt. It's still a receivable. So I think part of it is the auditor's need to classify receivables over a certain age as bad debt, um, which doesn't make them non-collectible. If I could, for I forget mm -hmm. my thought here. The, so we're, you know, we, we, have, we have debt on the, you know, on the books going back uh, that we're writing off from 2008. And you have monies that you're trying to collect, let's say now from that point forward. Where, where does it fall on a schedule of when is it looked at? When, when does that, that private pay become an issue? 
and are we billing immediately at some certain point? Are we billing at 30 days? Are you made aware in time that you can, what, what's, what's our plan? How, how soon do we know that we start trying to track that money? Well, we bill every month. Okay. Billing is done every month. Um, and then same thing with Medicare and Medicaid. They're billed every month. So then after that month, you wait for what you receive. And then like this month when I billed for April, I'll look back and see who hasn't done, whose money hasn't come in for March. And build, rebuild again if that's the case, if it needs to be rebuilt or if there needs to be an adjustment made to the claim, that kind of thing. Um, and with our new software, again, we talked to commissioners last week, with the software that we implemented starting last year, all our Medicare claims are imported to Medicare instead of me hand inputting them or hand writing them, which used to be the case, the claim I would have to write, which could be one person, could be two or three pages long, is now just they're imported from our therapy company, then they're imported to Medicare. So there's no, so a lot of those errors that may have happened by manually inputting or manually writing, hand writing each claim will be cut down too because of what we implemented last year. But that was just starting with last year that we got that. If, if, if I could now go ahead and then to Lino. Is, does your software then keep a month to month accumulation and bed number four now is owes $800 on Medicare or made it yes, Medicaid? Uh, each, yes, each resident you can pull up and see. Does, does your software then go to a reporting function and give you a list? I can print out a list, yes. But it can do that, it can import that over easy enough so that you can see that? Yes. Could you print us out one of those lists, not today, but another, mm -hmm. and send it to us and see where we're at? Yeah. Um, I'll that would be without a name, I assume. It'd be, uh, a, number, yeah, it'd be a number of accounts receivable. Right, okay. 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 In fact, that's actually part of a, a monthly reporting process that we started earlier with the commissioners. We now meet with the commissioners, you know, one with third, third, the third meeting of the month to review financials on a monthly basis, and we'll be adding accounts receivables to that. What about what about the private pay? Is that that's part of your accounts receivable? Everything, 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 will, everything show. will show there, so yes. you know bed number whatever right. yes. is going. Ed, right. go ahead, please. So, from 2009 to current, mm -hmm. in terms of bad debt, um, does that get billed every month? Does that bad debt get billed every month, just along with your regular billing? Well, only like there's claim, like there's claims that so we're maybe, working on. Yeah, definitions that we there, don't exactly. Understand. It's not necessarily bad debt if you're working on right. them. Like I said, I'm working with Medicaid on some of them to collect because of issues with system, billing systems that, so they're hand, gen I have to hand generate them and work with Medicaid to try to get those paid. Got it. So, so there's, so uh, the ones you bill for monthly are current. Correct. And anything that hasn't been paid in what period of time, um, can you then, do you then call it bad debt or uncollected and have to deal with it differently than the monthly billing? Yes, it has to be dealt with differently because I'll usually have to send those in because then there's override systems with Medicaid. If they're over a year old, you can send them into override. And with reasonings, you know, like you've tried to bill and this is the reason they reject it. And then we have our, I don't know, case tech or whatever for, and the Medicaid office that you work directly with and they help process those claims if they're hard to collect claims. How do you keep track of it? It's a lot of work. It, well, like I said, with, with what we're doing now with the new system that we got last year where I can electronically build things, it's much easier. It will be much easier for me to have time to chase those and collect those because I'm not spending five hours handwriting or hand inputting five claims out of 103. I mean, it was a, t it was a long process before. Now it's, m it's a much smoother process with the new system that we implemented. And is there anyone else in your office that works on these no. things? Okay. You're, you're a single person office? For, yes. For okay. Lee, you know something relating to this? Uh, ARs. 
Or do you want me to hold off until? You well, let's, done? let's just let's just finish up on this, and then we'll we'll, we'll, we'll come to you. So okay. there there's a substantial. Um, the way I understand that the auditing process is happening now is that they they want to write off anything um, that's not collected. They come up with a higher number, we come up with a lesser number. Mm -hmm. You have a new system in place that's going to aid you in keeping track of that. But let's let's talk about workload and how much money we have out there because right now we're chasing. And they're writing off everything but three, we're, we're chasing over a million and a half dollars, aren't we? And let's talk about workload and are, are we pound foolish by not having someone working with you that's aiding in that process? Or is this a manageable load? I, I don't see how it can be a manageable load. Howard? Well, it, now, well, especially with the computer. Ask, well, if if we were if we were we were three years ago, especially in this age of managed care coming up, which is going to complicate it, we'd be in a bind. But now that we have the computer system, it's it's actually under control. It isn't. I don't want you to think of this being a business where we have to go out and send out multiple bills to the same person. We're talking about Medicare, and Medicaid mm -hmm. as being being. You can't. You can. They're going to work in their own time. We're not dunning individuals. So we don't have a collection problem. We have delayed payment issues, and so we have timing issues. But we know that Medicare and Medicaid are going to pay, but when there's a problem, it, it's, it throws the whole system back three months. And, and for you, so tell me about private pay, though. Private pay has not been an issue, because what happens, we have in the state, the state of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. you know, what, there's only three reasons you can kick somebody out of a nursing home. Not payment is one of them. So we have pretty good leverage when it comes to payment. The problem that comes to be is that people in private pay can at times, and do, will run out of money and convert to Medicaid. That period of Medicaid pending delays the payment, doesn't eliminate it. So we don't go, we go without cash flow for a period, but eventually it's recovered. But that gets treated as an accounts receivable. And that will come from, that will come ultimately from, from Medicaid. I've had people depend on Medicaid for almost a year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but we're talking about a million dollars, um, all of which will eventually come to us. Well, most Possibly. of it, certainly. Ninety-eight percent of it, or whatever. Um, some of it is old uh, insurance claims. Um, but the rest of it is Medicare and Medicaid. And if someone were working more diligently, and I'm not saying you're not working on it, um, to communicate with Medicare and Medicaid and to um, follow up on those things and to, uh, you know, do whatever, uh, is there any other way to collect it more effectively? Um, if there were someone working on it uh, who had more time to do it? it. It's not, in my estimation, a matter of time. You can, you can knock on their door three times a day and it's still not going to speed, speed the process up. They have the claim and they act on it in their, on their schedule. But the submissions are, are wonderfully timely now. Now because of the computer part, right. it's, everything is submitted as, as soon at the end of the month as it can possibly be submitted. That's the, that's, that's the the singular part that we control. If this were two years ago, extra hours during that critical time could help. But now that all everything's getting submitted, essentially, you know, immediately, there's nothing. There's not much more that we can do. But six years old, five years old, four years old, why aren't those paid? See, we don't know that the numbers the audit is tossing out there are meaningful at this and point. And I, right, and I think that's why once I go through go. the reports and tell you, and I can tell you which claims are still being worked on, and which ones aren't, then I think we'll have a better understanding of So, so my, my chiropractor and about every medical person I know has a person, a gal, a guy mm -hmm. that does nothing but handle medical claims, watch insurance, trying to get money coming back in because they don't have the, the benefit of the county behind them. They've got to pay the bill at the end of the month. Right. 
So you're telling me that we're, we are okay with personnel that we have and what's in process, that we should be able to work with the auditors and and collect these monies in, in a reasonable amount of time? I'm, because I the think five it, and six years is concerning. To I think the number is overstated. So I think the collection part is going to be a lot easier once we get down to some real numbers. I can't believe that, that, that it's that extensive. That it just doesn't make sense. And especially after I talked to Grafton County. I, I, it doesn't make sense. And we're very comparable to them in size. I, and, and, and in operation. So I'm, I'm, up to, I'm hopeful. So if my understanding is correctly, Medicare takes 30 to 45 days to pay after they're notified, or is that a wrong assumption? Sometimes they're quicker. Like it, It's definitely quicker for me now that everything's done with my electronic files. Okay. You know, is three weeks. Is Medicaid... It's unless it denies, and then you have to read the little question. Okay, so is Medicaid the same thing? Is, is the state slower to pay than the federal on that oh. side of it, or... Is, or is it again about the same time? Frame? It's about the same time frame, unless there's an issue with your claim. And mo most of my Medicaid claims that are issues are when it's a Medicaid copay. If someone is here skilled and they have copayment days, and Medicaid is to pick up the copays, there's forms that have to be filled out by our by us submitted to our case tech. Then our case tech puts them in the system. Well, if they're not in the system the exact same way that the claim forms filled out, Medicaid doesn't pay. So then you have to go back and get a new form. It's, so it's the co-pays that are the issue. It's not the general person that's here on Medicaid as a straight Medicaid resident. Those are fairly clean and easy to bill. It's the co-pays that we and, chase and, the most and, of. And private pay, is that, is that a little less predictable in that 30 to 45 days or...? Most of our private pays are pretty good. I mean, you have a few who they have um, long-term care insurance, so they're waiting for that long-term care insurance check to come in because that helps back up what they need to pay, or they're waiting to cash in CDs or annuities that they get in a timely fashion. But most of them pay on a regular monthly basis. There's not. And if there is an issue, they're like, you know, my payment's going to be a little late. I have to cash, wait for this annuity to cash in. I don't have a big... But, you're, but you're, your reporting lists that for you and what you're doing with the commissioners at this point is should be sufficient to keep track of that. Right. And then if someone owes, they owe, right? right. I mean, if they're private, I, they're I own the store and you always want to run to the owner to try and get a little more time. So I'm, right. just, I'm just saying it's a real business practice. Yes. I'm not saying that it's not. You always go to the owner. Okay. All right. I think I think I understand that part. And if you can generate a report for us so that we, you know we can see it without names and black out, I don't care how we do it. Yes. If we are behind, the sake of argument, fifty thousand dollars at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. If that happens every year. And there shouldn't be adding up. You know, you get that fifty thousand later in the year. To, if you end up every year with fifty thousand behind, doesn't that all average out eventually that you're only fifty thousand behind? Well, try it again. All right. Uh, yeah, yes or not? I mean, I see. I mean, but, uh, like obviously, our patients that are here in December, we're not going to even bill them until January because they can't bill until we know that they were here for the whole month of December. So we're never going to get. December revenue, so to speak, what's posted on the books, that was my December revenue. We're not going to get that mm -hmm. until the next year. We're not going to actually collect that money until the, until the following year. But that year. happens the following year, the same the, the, scenario. Right, the same year. scenario, yes, yes. So in the end, you could theoretically be fairly even, because you're always 20000 behind or $50,000 behind. 2014, or 2013, when you got to the end of the year, you had a bill into the next year for fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and you got to the thought next year you were behind the same. You had a bill into the next year to get it. So is that fairly consistent that amount? So in the end, it all averages out. When you when you say averages out, I mean it's you're always the same amount every year. No, roughly no. no. Okay. And that's that would affect cash flow 
but not a cruel accounting. Right. You know, right, the, the money that you receive in February could well be for December. If it was built for December, and it would be a, it, it's when it falls in different years, but it's still, it's, ca cash accounting is different than a cruel accounting, which is, is, which is what the, you know, we pay the bills on cash accounting, but we keep track of the books for the cruel to be sure that the revenue received matches the, the charges that were made. Okay. Yeah. okay. We all up, up to this point? Lena, you want to go another direction? Another question? Um, no, same same direction. Okay. Same direction. Just, diff uh, just a different approach. The, may I? Please. The, um, um, can you tell me how we get to that number? What number are you referring to now? The first page, first number, 7900000 which is what we said we got for last year. And this number are all my journal entries. And this is what you billed for? And Except for this pro share money. This okay. is money that just comes in, this section right here. That comes in to next door and Kathy sees it and posts it. And okay. Which is the pro share? This is the the full year one. That's twenty. Is sent. I don't know. I don't know if they get electronically or how they get it, but it goes yeah. next door, and Kathy does these journal entries for the pro share. Okay. All the other figures, except for this one, um, all these are my journal entry figures of what was billed. The revenue for Medicaid for each month. Okay, go ahead, Lena. And how do we? Who verifies that we've actually received seven million nine hundred thousand dollars for the year twenty fourteen? I don't know who verifies. I make deposits. They go into the transfer account, and then that money, the transfer account's held next door. So then they transfer money from the account that I deposit into into their general funds to pay the bills. So I guess this would be for Commissioner Fabson. How do we verify that we actually made $7,900,000 last year? I would assume that when it goes into the bank account, we get we get receipts that it's placed in there. And they would we've got her to double check. Okay. And, and then it gets transferred out again to another account so we can pay our bills. And how would we account for December if it was billed out in December, we didn't get a check till January or February? What is your question? If we build in December, yeah, and Medicaid pays 30 to 45 days, we could technically get that check in the middle of February. Yeah. How would it be accounted for in the previous year? My understanding, um, Representative, it would go the February payment would be put back into because um, we're doing it on a cruel basis would be shown as December where it came from. Okay. That's two questions. Um, who verifies the checks when they actually come in? Is there, is there a process that we go through to make sure that we're getting $557,427 in January? Or is there any missing, you know, say they get $547,000 and it's 10000 light? Who verifies to make sure that we're um, getting the money that we've built? Well, this figure for January. We're not going to actually get 557 because you have to back out your contractual. Right. I don't think anyone verifies. I get the check. I post the check to their accounts. It gets okay. deposited. It goes next door. I don't know. What does that mean? So they a running tab? Crossing. There's a running tab somewhere? Of who's still owed for January? Yeah, right. in their accounts receivable, you'd be able to see who's who still had a December, an outstanding December charge after we got paid. Okay. It is, and who, who keeps control of that? Is it uh, something you do or is that something the business office does? Well, I have who still owes. Like if I got paid in January for December, then after I post that payment for December, I could then look at their accounts and see who didn't, whose account didn't get paid. Okay. And then I could go and rebuild or... Okay, so there's, there will still be some type of recovery for the yes. months that are built? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's a, on the supplemental budget, there's an invoice for $64,208 for a union raise. Is that um, for what? Looked like there was the end of August. Yes. 
So about a quarter of the way down the chart, there's um, adopted annual budget straight down $64,208, and it's listed as a supplemental budget item for 2014. You're asking, and you, that is a union payment? Yeah, what is it for? Oh, okay. It's a union raise, but where is it coming from? Why is it here? I have no idea. I would say that would be. First, I've seen it. Okay. And I don't really. It's somebody sending us money. No, you're you're backing money out of my revenue line. Oh, excuse me. You're right. You're right. I don't remember a supplementary budget. You were here last year, and you know I don't remember. Do you? Ed? I don't remember any supplementary budget last year. Well, it would have been an invoice, or it would have been a debit from the. Account that we're looking at here. Yeah. It's, show, it's it's titled supplemental budget, but it's that's not what it was. Right. I'd ask for an update on that if that's okay. May I continue? Sure, please. Um, also on the um, second page, um, under the physical therapy. Skilled, private, Part B, occupational therapy, uh, speech therapy, and speech therapy. There, there seems to only be six months um, of entries, um, and I know that um, Paula told me they switched over to a new system in June. Um, I'd, I'd like to know why the revenues weren't tracked for 2014 a little more closely, um, especially starting in August for 2014. Well, and if this is from January, where are the skilled? First six months, where are they? The question? Hmm. Well, I would say they're in August numbers coming forward yes. through, um, given uh -huh. the fact that there's a large line item. Yep. Yep. But where, there is no verification of how or where these numbers came from, in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And um, if there were um, issues, and it seems to me that there was money, uh, not money, uh, revenues that weren't available through these billings, why weren't, um, I'm going to say, uh, people made aware of the lack of, um, you know, controls put in to say, all right, well, we're 40% off or 30% off in August, you know, we need to take a closer look at this, make some adjustments or this and that. Do we want to come back to that, or? Well, no. Let's let's talk about it. Uh, is there? Do we have any explanation for why why it's not accounted for? Is that something that your numbers always go to the business office? Business office didn't bring it back. Is was it a lack of tracking at this end? Mm -hmm. What what gets us to that point that he's asking? When we implemented our new software last year, in order for therapy charges they had to put in each therapy code, the software company. So until all those therapy codes were in, we couldn't import our charges in because they would have had nowhere to go. So not until, I think, well, July, July was the first month where we ha officially had all the full charges in. So we did July, and then in August, we went back and imported all the other charges. But our system wasn't officially capable of importing those charges until then. So you because they were putting it took in, six months to set the, the new program? It took more than, yes. <clears throat> and we didn't do that. We had the company do that. The company was, that's the outside company? The outside company. Um, no, we um, have NTT data. They're the ones we upgraded our software with them, and that was one of the programs that was put in so okay. that we could electronically build with just a couple clicks instead of um, hand doing them. But in order for them, when they finally got all the system in place for us to do that, wasn't until 
later in the year, so we couldn't import anything in or wouldn't have had anywhere to go. Right. So during those during those periods that were lying dormant that we're not able to input, mm -hmm. and are those are those new numbers for service? Is that part of the new national health care program with with inputs, or is that using or is that using coding that you were using manually before? Right, it was using the manual coding. They had to put in each therapy code. So for each type of therapy that we could have or would maybe someday use, they have okay. to input each one okay. with an amount. Okay, so that was our our time to modernize what we had mm -hmm. in the software. Correct. During that time period, what was what was being shown as income? A projection of what it should be? We didn't, well, we didn't send anything next door because we didn't have anything in the system. Okay. Does this get to your point, Lino, about the... No. Okay. okay. We'll get, we'll get there. All right. On, on the overall revenue guideline that we were given on January of this year, um, it was $841,000 that were missed the mark on the revenues. Most of it seemed to have come from physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. And I just want to know how come that we picked up on it in July or August or even September that we were way off on these numbers compared to what was budgeted. Seeing as um, at that point, I, I, it, we should have raised a lot of red flags to whoever was importing it into this system. Because you can only bill for what services you render. Right. There should have been adjustments made um, within the budget at that, you know, I would say, at, at the very earliest August, so you can make your adjustments in September. Or however, whenever you guys have to do your budget, Mark. Your adjustments for the year. For tax purposes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's eight, January 1st or September 1st or. How do you have any, any way of going to Lena's question? I do, because we have, in addition to the budget, we have to introduce the, the management tools that will help us to catch things early. I want to suggest that you pass those down for Ed. And, and what we have is that we need, we need to be catching things before they happen. So. So we now track things month by month. This one is just starting in 2015. And you look at the, the first page, that's census. The thing that would control the therapy is going to be page two and page three. Page two are skilled days. The red line shows this year. The black line shows last year. Um, when you look at page three, you can see last year the black line is way under the red line. And that's, that's bad. But this, so we're, we're introducing management tools in addition to the financial tools. So this, they, they track together. The revenue comes from the services provided. This is actually tracking days and minutes of, of service, which I'm, which I'm doing. So that, that, you know, that we at the management side and the commissioners on an ongoing basis are going to be able to see trends. So we will we'll never be taken by surprise. Well, we were taken by surprise in in the numbers we're looking at. So I guess the, the you know is the question is that um, why why were we not able to see the issue back in August and report in August? I can see that going forward, it looks like we've got a handle on it. But, but, but what happened so that we? We didn't know for that long period of time, but I believe the numbers we were seeing were showing that we were we were tracking pretty close to revenues to where they should be, seventy percent, eighty percent, or maybe higher. The third quarter numbers that we got at the delegation in December uh, put the nursing home revenues at seventy-two percent for the three quarters. And Lino, your point is from looking at here, that's not the case. Am I right or wrong? I, I, I would I would make that case. Without I, I would need further 
information to make a statement on that, but I think it definitely should have been picked up. Um, I know Howard mentioned it in March that there was um, some um, on the thing here that there was some lagging in the um, skill part, but um, it should have been picked up much earlier. Um, anybody that deals with budgets knows, you know, especially since this is half, almost more than half of the overall budget, we should be uh, a little more, uh, a little more diligent with the numbers. Um, also, I'd, I'd like to call to page, may, Mr. Chairman? Please go right there. Page five, under the cafe meals. The 14 same. or 15? Page five. Oh, I know, but 14 or 15? 14. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. He's on 14. 14. We're, we're still on 14. We haven't gotten to 15 yet. There seems to be um, some months missing for the income from cafe meals. And I know the cafe wasn't closed, and I know that you guys started accepting credit cards in September-ish. Um, so I was just wondering why there was no income for October, uh, November. I know you made more than $95, and there's no December listed here. Um, and there's also no breakout from where the credit cards were received or fees paid for 2014. I have no explanation because we're making our deposits weekly. We, I don't see the credit card statements. I don't see anything to do with the credit card machine. What I do is I do deposits. I seal them. The deposits are sent next door. And I believe the sheriff's department takes them to the bank. I'm not sure. The sheriff's department or somebody next the door deposits the them. Does. Yeah. Um, the credit card machine is all an account that's held next door. So I don't do, I don't see that, so I don't do any postings for it because I don't even know what's gone into it. But we're depositing, I think, weekly, aren't we? Yeah, your sheets, your, your Every other week, every yeah. three, I mean, it depends um, on the deposit. But as far as the, the, the credit card machine, that would be, I would imagine they'd get a statement on a monthly basis. Um, see, it comes into Kathy uh, Armstrong. Who's Kathy Armstrong? Who's one of the gals in the uh, business office? Thank you. So, so if I look at this, um, you're you were showing that, that uh, November is at ninety-five dollars, and we're missing the month of September. Yeah. September. No, we have September. Uh, October, November, and December. October, November, and December. There's there was more than ninety-five dollars. I'm sure. I like I said, I, I write up the deposits. They go next door and they're taken to the bank from there and they have the checkbook. So they have all the receipts from the deposits because they're doing them and they're holding the checkbook. So so there could be essentially more income there should be, for 2014, I, obviously. Right. I would imagine there should be adjustments made for whatever the credit card brought in. I, okay. Um, there's, probably, there's probably well over $10,000. Easily. Would be my yeah, it's, I mean, we're pretty consistent on yeah. I mean, yeah, you've been running pretty consistent. December is a boom town, right? There's people here, so right. it's, it's a bigger yeah. Okay, and there, I have a couple more, please, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. On the right above that, income from meals, I'm guessing it's from the jail, yes, correct. Uh, on our budget worksheet that we got in 319-2015, we can on our expenditure worksheet for the jail has $198,218 listed as meal expenses, but only $193,143 show up on the line of the line for the cafeteria. So I was just wondering if there was a place where it goes or if there's a charge somewhere or if there's a fee. That should show up as unexpended revenue on the House of Corrections. They're putting together at the beginning of the year their projection for what their census will be. So if they're, if the number of prisoners falls down, they pay us less. They're actually, we actually 
billed by the mule. Right, no, I'm looking at the actual dollars that they expended. He's the, he has two reports with two oh, different okay. numbers on them yep. at the same end so of the So I just want to make sure that we're, uh, the nursing home is getting the money that it says it's going and it's not being deferred to other areas. And I do know from Rob has been giving me, before I never saw those, Rob would send the journal entries over on his own. He is sending me copies of journal entries for income so we can keep track of that also. Which is good. Here. Instead of just sending it next door, he's emailing me a copy so that I can plug in the figures too. So, Lino, are you, yes, are you, are you above cafe meals? Is that where you are? Yes, I am. It says, it says physician's income and then line 51 right under that. Yep. It says income for meals. Uh, January meals to jail, meals to jail, meals to jail. Um, okay. The overall number on the top was 193,000. Right. Paul, Paul, any possibility that on our end there's a, a farm component in addition to House of Correction? Not that I'm aware of. This okay. is what we were looking at. Yeah. Yeah. What it's, number doesn't it match up with Lino? A uh, line on the expenditures. I can give you the line. 6,152. I'm, I'm sorry. 51. And what does it say for a number? 198. Two one eight. So five thousand dollar difference. Yeah. So we could be looking at anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in un fun un unfound or un caught revenue. Here between though. between those two departments. Between those two departments for twenty fourteen. It's a question of where you go. Right, that and then the other the other ones I don't know the percentages and how to between the Medicaid and the withholding and all other stuff. I think I think I've made my point pretty clearly. Um, can we move on to 2015, the one we got today? Yeah, you're all set finally with 2014. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with 2014. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I, there's a few questions on that. Okay, no, I'm, I'm more happy to forward them to you later if you want. Thank you. Okay, let's go 15. Um, page three. Line 53, cafe meals. We have, we seem to have double entries for January, February, and March. Um, one is cafe terminal sales for January, but there doesn't seem to be any cash sales for January, which I find hard to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, in February, there was $10,000 in cafe sales, and then $73 for merchant credit card fees, but no line item for how much credit card terminal sales were. And then in March, we seem to have cafe sales March, $4,500, which is more in line to where I would expect to see that, but no entry for credit card sales, only a merchant fee of $91. Um, so I would be um, questioning that accounting. Um, questioning number one, the fees being collected for that amount of money. Right. So right. if it um, was 10000 they were only collecting seventy three, but in $4,500, they are collecting $4,900. Well, this, I believe, is the 10000 I believe, is deposits, like cash deposits, I'm guessing. Because that's a, the one above it says cafe terminal sales, which would I would imagine she put in for the credit card. And then cafe sales... When it just says that, I'm assuming those are my deposits that I've sent over. So you did 10000 in February? I can, I'll, I will check, but I'm guessing where one says terminal sales and one doesn't. I'm assuming the terminal is the credit card, and it, they're not on here. They're all journal entries, because I just do up the deposit and give her those, so then when they deposit them, they have the slip, and then they can post it just to know that it's okay. okay. <laughs> so um, um, I, I would take a closer look at how these are um, Budgeted. I'm guessing it's going to be the business office to start. Because there's no reason January shouldn't be updated, February shouldn't be updated, March shouldn't be updated, even April shouldn't be updated. Um, and if anybody needs a question of how credit card fees are assessed, I bought a bill that I pay. You know, it's roughly two and a half to three percent depending on the month. Um, so if, if Cafe sales were a thousand dollars. You guys are paying seven percent on fees, yeah. which I think is kind of much. Sure. 
you know, I think you're you're in agreement with that, Mark, because you're sure. in the same yeah, boat. No, that's, <laughs> that's that's way out. Of, that's way so, out. and especially if a lot of it's debit, debit usually cashes out at a lower rate, usually okay. one point one five with a smaller fee up front, because there's no uh, exchange through Mastercard or Visa. Wow. And so, and so, in, in my simple terms, when I look at that, and I'm I'm only looking at three months here. Um, we're the cafe in 2015 is doing about five thousand dollars a month, and if you follow that, you know, if you compare that to last year, those missing months really make a difference. And five thousand doesn't sound right as an average when we're showing, you know, some of those months are uh, six and seven thousand dollars. So it would appear there's we don't even have the right number of revenue or. The opposite is happening in the cafe. It's making less money than normal. Right. I have a follow up on that too. Does the uh, contractual thing where they were paying for meals for a while, did that actually happen where they had to pay for meals? That disappears on Monday. But did it, is that some way worked into this figure because not as many people ate or something? I don't know. No, actually, we, we actually increased the budget for cafe meals for this year, anticipating that we would not be giving away free meals, <laughs> okay. and more and therefore more people would buy. Mark, I have a follow yeah, up go ahead. comment, actually. Um, usually when you start taking credit cards or debit cards, um, sales seem to increase as well. Um, I know mine did um, quite a bit from year to year, and I think it's a good, good program to have, especially in the cafeteria. But we're not necessarily seeing it with the numbers we're seeing here. No, no, I, I think there needs to be more oversight. Okay. So before before we leave cafe, so sure. you, Paula, you're given the, um, the cash on a daily basis and mm -hmm. then you make deposits on whatever your cycle is. Right. But you don't see the money that was put in in credit cards? You don't see that money? I don't see the account is held, held next door. The statements go to the business office. So I don't, I don't see those on a monthly in a, basis. In a simple world, though, don't they, when they cash out of there for the day, they have a slip that tells them end of, end of shift it was five hundred dollars cash and two hundred dollars in credit cards yes. so that you you sh you have that don't you yes we keep all those on file um they come in with the cash and sasha receives the cash and then staples everything together and it goes in a file but i don't do anything with them because kathy was holding the book um and getting the statements and that's what she was going to do was post to this account how difficult it is if, if the money's being taken here and the credit card's being run here, mm -hmm. how difficult is it for that cash drawer just to end up with you? Why should it go anywhere else? You know, it why? Should. Oh, it could. I, I mean, it, yes, we could if they wanted to give us the check for being with the students and the statements here. That could, we could do that. It's, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems most of the work is done over here and then sent over there and then sent back and these things. And that right. desk has to be piling up with other things that are <laughs> happening. I would I would rather see that if there's revenue coming from here, it should be accounted here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense for it not to be. Okay. Question, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, there's been some discussion about journal entries um, going over to the uh, business office. Um, and I, I saw. Well, I'm, I, gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's let's hold for a moment. I'm sorry. Ed had to make a phone call, and, uh, I, and I was supposed to hold until he got back. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take a break. Yeah. Serious. I apologize. He's <coughs> to tell me. I want to I want to bring, bring him up to speed where we are on that. Yeah. Brief recess. Yes. In now February of 2015, on 10,000 bucks, it looks like you have a fee of seventy-three dollars. But that ten thousand dollars isn't looks like terminal it's cash. fees. That wasn't credit card money. That was probably deposits I sent next door. If you just look at January, it says uh, 
ninth, uh, on the ninth. Um, Ed, I'll bring you up to speed in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, it says cafe terminal sales, and then right under it says cafe credit card fees of $71. Yep. Yep. That's that, about right. That's not right. I pay about 2.5%. Um, I thought you said the average was about 6%. No. 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 He said that's what it looks like we're paying. Like it actually looks oh, like 7%. Okay. I'm sorry. And I know what you're on. Right. I don't, I don't think so. I'd, yeah. I'd, uh, you'd have to leave, add up. I mean, we'd have to see the bills, obviously. Right. But um, I, I would think that we should be looking at at least two and a half, or even a high end of three percent, because a lot of it seems to be, I want to say, debit sales, if, because I saw the keypad out there. So, and yeah, then the cafe true. sales looks like it's cash sales, merchant, and then again under that it says merchant credit card fees, but, and then I don't see an entrant for February's merchant credit card receipts. And then that's what that, I uh, asked that while you were out yep. of the room. Yep, there's no, doesn't seem to be any <coughs> listing because the first one says terminal sales, then we have cafe sales, and then we have cafe sales. We don't have any terminal sales right. for February, March, or September, October, or November of last year when it started. On top of the other, which I'll get, I'll get, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll do that here right now. Yeah, let's go. Just I, I apologize. No, I apologize. You had told me before the meeting started you had an appointment to go to, and I forgot, so. All right. Uh, so uh, Ed on He's in fourteen. Yeah, we're on uh, fourteen revenue yeah, guideline I detail think. revenue for Good. fourteen. Yep. Um, on part fifty three, page page five. Yep. Part fifty three. Yep. Um, there's journal entries are missing. You there? Yep. Uh, October, November, and December. Yep. Seems to be missing revenue numbers or sales numbers or however you classify them as. Mm -hmm. And also since September there was credit card deposits made but they're not on this detail. So that would be one part um, that we would we were discussing that at length. Great. Um, if you want me to nope. Nope. continue on it, pretty sure you've got the grasp for that. Yep. Uh, right above it, part 51, income from mails from the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a 193,000 number 143. Yep. On our expenditure budget work, <coughs> it was listed as 198-218. So there's a $5,000 difference between what the jail expended and what the uh, nursing home took in. Got it. So I just had a question on that. Mm -hmm. Nice catch. On the 2015, you good with that? You want me to yep. continue on? Nope. The 2015 had the same, same questions. It was page three. Yep. Part 53. Yep. Uh, first journal entry for January was credit card cafe terminal sales right, I see of 1000 yep. with uh, credit card fees listed. In February there was cafe sales and then only merchant credit card fees mm -hmm. with no line item for terminal sales. Mm -hmm. There was no cash sales for January. In mm -hmm. March they looked like there was cash sales and then again no entry for terminal sales, only a merchant fee. I think you know. Yep. Yep. What that is. Yep. <coughs> um, I don't have the income from the jail yet, but we haven't got the their expenditure line yet. I haven't gone through all that. Got it. Yet. And then we were talking about since Mark, do you want to take that piece? Go, go, go right ahead. Oh, uh, uh, since everything, uh, Paul, since Paul processes everything, sends it next door, and then it seems to get lost in the mix of why. It shouldn't just stay here. Because mm -hmm. she, she's, she's getting sheets, Paul is getting sheets, saying, you know, there were cash sales of this and credit cards and so forth. But she has no way of reconciling anything because she doesn't know what was billed out for credit cards and what came back. So at least in this instance, we should be, the money for the amount of effort it's going to take, it should stay over here. Because it looks like between these two things last year, we're surmising, you know, 10, 15,000 in 2014. We're guessing on some numbers there, but that's pretty close. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were already off on this. So I think we, should, you know, should certainly make a recommendation that monies that are generated in this building should stay in this building. And then the other one, I don't know if you have for that, was the. Union? Yes. You were yes. Yep. Good. So there's going to need to be a fair amount of clarification. Quite a bit. 
And how is that going to be done? Is, uh, are we going to have Kathy come and, and sit and talk about those? Are you going to sit with her and then we'll have another meeting? How do you well, I, I, think, I think we'll ask, I can ask those questions where they are and that get it reconciled for the past, but I would hope that we'll come up with a recommendation that the monies from the cafe, you know, what's it going to take to keep it here <coughs> so that, you know, we can keep that closer because here's, We've got some history here, and we're right. showing a history that it's not being accounted for. Good. Question, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, we had some discussion about information going from here to there, and, and journal entries made here going over to their office. And it looked like, I just saw a sheet uh, oh. from my friend here, uh, of journal entries from the nursing home that I assume is what is sent over mm -hmm. to the so, you know, to me, and, and I think maybe Mr. Chairman, we have some correspondence about this, that maybe there might be a system-to-system -system issue as well. Um, you know, does the nursing home system generate paper reports that are then sent to the business office that require manual entries into the business office? This is financial a financial system. This system is a yes. standalone system from ours. Right. So, you know, my question would be, and we touched on this in the Appropriations Subcommittee also, um, when we have two standalone systems, you know, normally, you know, in a business operation, you would try and interface those systems so that you're not doing, you know, all this manual entry, which can lead to problems, and maybe that might be, you know, some of what we're seeing here, it might not be, but, you know, certainly, uh, you know, the ability to uh, interface the two systems um, either through, uh, you know, a file transfer or direct interface, I think, is something that, you know, should be looked at. Well, I, so if I understand right, we, we have spent some time and effort and we've modernized our accounting procedures over here. Mm -hmm. And so you're handling billings and things in a more timely manner. But then, um, then many of your <coughs> items are then being sent to the business office that isn't using the same software. And then those are being manually entered into their system. And, Is that yeah, what? to generate these, all my journal entries, I summarize for them into my, my journal entry reports, which you received. And then they're manually inputted into, Kathy manually inputs them into our ACS system. Well, you know, there's always a problem where a zero can get dropped or it can be added, but we're also slowing down the reports that we need to know in timely manners, that the commissioners need to know in timely manners. What, what, and I asked this, I asked this several months ago, and I'm going to ask it again, why aren't we handling all of the process, all of the business of the nursing home in the nursing home, and then turning over what data needs to be handed over to the commissioner's office if their office has to have keep keep something for reports. Why aren't why aren't we doing it all here? Short answer is because it's always been done this way. Yeah. Well. Well, I, I can I can appreciate that. <coughs> I mean that's something. But, I mean that. But we haven't we haven't historically been in an issue that we're in right now. And you you talked about upgrading our software system so that things work better, so we have billings, so we have a better handle. We know the money that's out there. That's that definitely makes sense. What's the disadvantage of doing of doing that other than time that it's going to take is, is, is where 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 is where is the need for this processing that's happening over there because apparently it's certain I apologize apparently it is slowing down the data that we need over here it and seems to me that the only thing that the nursing home or that the uh, central office needs is a, a deposit into the general fund you know um, there's no reason that the commissioners can't monitor the budget here and the budget in um, other things that the central office accounts for, but it's a good, it's a good question. 
Uh, Lino, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'd actually like to make a, a recommendation for Howard and Paula to come up with a plan to make the nursing home self-sufficient. Because uh, I've seen all, all I need to see, and if, if one set of numbers is right, and then the numbers that we're given are wrong from the business office um, across the street, um, I am more inclined to believe the numbers from the nursing home before anything else. Um, uh, given the fact that just going through 2014 was just eye-opening, to say the least, um, I, w I would make that recommendation. I don't know if you need a motion for that as well. Um, discussion. Uh, uh, discussion before we make the motion. I, either I, way. I, I, I'll, ex I'll accept <coughs> the motion. I'll second the motion. We'll go into discussion. So. Did you have something to say before I take? No. Go ahead. Um, I, I think that with a system where we have uh, interdepartmental charges for the jail and nursing home cafe, et cetera, like that, um, I, I think having all of that in the central financial system is, uh, is beneficial to get a, a full picture and full detail. Um, rather than just doing a, a, a bottom line um, departmental charge uh, re-entry into the financial system, I, I think uh, a much better way is to, to in, have an interface so all the detailed charges uh, such as from you're talking about with the cafe and everything could flow from the nursing home system into the general financial system. And, you know, there are interfaces, um, you know, between systems done in all sorts of businesses every day, and so I, I think that, that there might be a common interface already um, in place that the, our financial system um, would have a, a standard interface that they could accept information in, and it would just be an inf um, you know possibly a matter of the nursing home vendor um, outputting the information in the format that is expected in the central financial system. Um, so you know those types of things are, are worked out you know every day <coughs> in information technology. So if, if I understand, I'm not anywhere near where you are on that uh, knowledge-wise. But are you, the the point is that I, I, the the motion we have is that we're gonna we're gonna keep control of records here in this building. Are you telling me that there are interfaces then that could possibly in the business office so that when they're done with their things. It'll shoot to them, and then they know where we're at. Are you are are you disagreeing with the need to keep everything here? No. Not, okay. All right. I see what you're saying. Question: We in the position that that's our res responsibility that we can do that within our power? I think we're 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 at a point of making a motion to make a recommendation. A recommendation yeah. to the commissioners. To the commissioners. Okay. No, actually, to Howard and Paula to come up with a plan for us. And they can like, present, be presented to us sometime in the near future when they're done with that. Okay, so your point is that they would present that to us, and we'll right. talk about what what rub that would have. Ed, did you? Have? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, as much as I agree with uh, the idea of centralizing and and uh, maintaining the books and the responsibility here, um, and understand what Representative Cordell is saying relative to interface. Um, I think that we should do what we're doing, identify the problems, and present them to the new administrator. Um, I think uh, making a significant <coughs> change like this, it, and, or spending the time to have Paula and Howard make that recommendation before the administrator is here, I think is uh, um, it's too early. Um, as much as uh, it makes sense. Okay. I, I I think I understand what you're saying. My my let's 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 open the question. Let's open the conversation up a little here. So Howard, um, I'm I'm sure it would seem to me if I was managing this property, I would like to have more up to date data with what's happening. No question. Okay. So, they, but the but the underlying question is how to get that data, and 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 I never want to say we should do the same thing that everybody else does because everybody else does it. But you know, the nine other counties have centralized financial management. 
because there are some economies of scale, if we split out, we're still going to be reliant on the business office for a number of allocated expenses that we don't control. Work is comp, liability insurance. There are a lot of things that are that are shared throughout the county that are not unique to us. Are you who's generating your payroll now? Pay, payroll is, is through a combination of HR and, and business office. Business office primarily. They are. are, are Could payroll not be, is, is there a reason why it, it goes through HR, is that where it goes? H, HR supervises the time and attendance portion, the chronos part, and the business office has a different system that does the actual payroll part. Okay, I think about that. Good point. Well, I was going to follow up on that point. Okay. Um, is the chronos verified here before it goes over there? Each, each, each staff member approves their time, which is then approved by their supervisor before it's allowed to be paid. So, if, if, I, if I may, so the employee verifies their time, and then it goes to their supervisor, and then it goes to somebody in an office here. Then it goes, then it goes, to, the bus yep. then it goes yep. to the business office for, to be paid. So it goes from employee to supervisor to manager, over to HR, and then over to the business office. No, it goes from employee to supervisor right. to business office. Oh, there's no, you don't sign off on it and you don't verify it. No. It also ver verifies that the time's accurate. I only do for the people that report to me, right. their supervisors. I have access to all that information, but it's not required for the routine payroll. So there could be between anywhere between three, four, or five people handling time cards. Over before, here. Before they even get. Over here it's two. The staff member two. and their so supervisor. Then, so then it goes to HR over there and then to the business no, office. No, just to the business office. Straight to the business office. Although HR does supervise <laughs> chronos and individual things that might have to be made, adjustments and the like. But the routine payroll, staff member, their supervisor, and business office. So if there was a, 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 an HR supervisor here, or I'm just using that as that, they could process the payroll for, for this facility without even having to go across the street. Once it's in a Kronos, I mean, in fact, what's unusual here is usually time and attendance, Kronos, is fully integrated with the payroll. Right. Um, it's not here. Kronos system is different from the ECS system, so it has to be imported from Kronos to the business office. Is that manually? It's, it's, I think it's automatic, but it's, I mean, it's... There's a process. There's a process. <coughs> could you, could you... If you had your own payroll system, let's say you went outsourced it to... ADP. Would you be able to do everything in-house? Uh, uh, especially using a provider like ADP, it's no problem at all. And they'd follow benefits, they'd be able to do deductions, they'd be able to do the whole all the, 941s, all the federal, ones, filings, all the the federal filings, the state filings, the new hire filings. The and they deposit the FICA money, they, you know, they, they take care of the whole, whole shebang. Okay. Please. Part of my thing be maybe an independent payroll study or your thoughts on it or suggestions Glenn did you have a question yeah, um, yeah. a statement and a question um, yeah um, I think it was about a year ago that um, we finally heard that uh, the integration between between Kronos and the ACS payroll system had been completed. Um, it had been, it, the full implementation of Kronos had taken something like three years. Right. Um, but my recollection is four, okay. Um, <laughs> I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. Um, the, uh, that that had been completed um, a year ago and that there was an interface between those two. Um, but I, I heard maybe that there are still some issues with that, and um, there was also, a, I think, a change in responsibilities between the business office and HR in terms of time and attendance and so forth, and I think that might factor into it, but um, I know I, I worked at uh, a large medical center, and uh, we implemented the Kronos timekeeping system that interfaced in, uh, with ADP, and they ran um, all of our our payroll for us, um, and uh, we were working on integration with ACS to a full uh, uh, employment hiring system as well. 
through okay. ACS. Uh, through um, through uh, ADP. David? Yeah, that's plenty of question. So what did Kronos do after that, Glenn? Just correct the information? If it was interfaced with ADP, they must have collected the information and sent it to ADP for him and payroll. Right. So what was Kronos' final function? Just to gather the information? Right. They do all the, the time and attendance and, and tracking. Right. Yes. So it would pop up on your screen on Monday yep. morning, on Paula's screen, and she'd go over and check the box of every person that was here or there and verify the numbers and then hit send and it goes to your local ADP office. I'm just using ADP. There's a no, lot of other companies. That there. office pays the bills. <coughs> they pay the salary, yeah, the checks. Yeah, the checks come out of ADP. Yeah. So how do they, if we're running in the negative, how do they have enough money to use to pay people? You can, um, ADP has the option, you can use your account or you can use their account. Their account they charge a fee for, your account they don't charge anything for because it's an A. Uh, automatically in house ACH. The, the county, to the best of my understanding, has never been to a point that it could not did not have cash flow to pay its payroll, even though we are the right. largest pay provider. So I, I don't I don't think that's an issue. Okay, and my second question has to do with uh, the auditor. Does the auditor have to? What happens if he changes tracks and suggests not to do this? So we have an administrator that's going to come on and can potentially may look at this. And then you're going to have an auditor for <coughs> years from sends in. What? The auditor is only supposed to oversee the how the accounts are are created, defined, and whether or not the numbers balance. So they wouldn't make a suggestion that we don't. You mean the yeah. performance audit guy? And then, yeah. and then they, they like a financial that's different. Guy. Right. 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 Oh, okay. right. And then, and then they will make a list of using standard practices that you should look at this and okay. deficiencies and so forth. So, okay. So, so in is well, I I would I would probably agree with Ed in your position if if things were running rosy and things looked good. But, you know, we, we are sitting on what I'm hearing, you know, the auditors and where we are of a $2 million shortfall and other things. So I, I guess my question is to Howard, you know, is this something that we should form a subcommittee to do to look at these things? Or, um, I, you know, how much, I, I, I look at how for four months or five months how we were waiting for software to catch up with us and we didn't know what was happening. I know that we were sitting here thinking things were looking good at the end of the third quarter last year when they weren't. Uh, so I know that it takes time away from, from the process, but we, we, need, we need corrections that, that turn the ship heading in the right direction sooner than you know waiting for it to come back around so do you, do you have a sense is this something that, that we could ask you to do or is this something we should do as a subcommittee ourselves or it's clearly something we could do but the, another alternative would be you need to have the management and financial information that you need to have confidence in what we're doing same as the commissioners do does that have to be a completely duplicate system or us developing the tools that you want and getting it from the, the resources that, that you need. Um, because if, if I put my county hat on and not my, my Mountain View hat on, well, if, if there are issues that, that, that we need to do, solving it just for Mountain View isn't going to address the rest of the issues. And maybe, and, and maybe with the addition of a county administrator, there's going to be opportunity to address everything. But in the meantime, so we don't want to wait for the prize at the end. Right. We need to be able to give you, we need to push whatever we need to do to get the confidence in the figures. And, and Paul and I have been working on that, whether it's management tools with charts or in different kind of accounting with us doing, giving, giving the commissioners, we started that process a couple months ago, um, <coughs> monthly data. I think, I, think we can get, I think we can get you without having to duplicate the system, the information you need. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, it, it is possible to do the alternative. Question mark. Yeah. For Howard. Yeah. Um, 
I like the county hat, and I, and I like the Mountain View hat that you wear, and I, and I know we're putting you in a tough position to come up with an answer, because um, you're between a rock and a hard place. But, but to be honest with you, I have no, um, uh, no faith in the ACS financial system that we get from the business office, given the fact of just the mistakes found in 14 and in the first three months of 15 with just simple entries. Um, I would rather, uh, again, I, I want to make the, the case that we should, the nursing home should be self-sufficient with, with oversight from the commissioners and let's say the other county administrator. Um, saying this, your, your numbers are obviously your numbers. They don't need to be duplicated. They don't need to be transferred. They don't need to be interfaced. Um, a, 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 nice, a, a nice quick accounting is always nice to have instead of having to go line by line by line with an outdated archaic system that seems to be just filing paper after paper after paper and information that's not updated or caught or mistakes. It, it just seems to me that it's just a, a waste of, of taxpayer money to keep on doing the same thing year after year after year. It's 2015. We should have financials in place. We should have safeguards in place. We should be budgeting correctly. We should be doing all kinds of things correctly. It should come down to the point where we're faced with million dollar shortfalls and beyond to sit here and actually get this done. My opinion. And, and uh, uh, just a quick follow up before I end. And, and people need to be held accountable for the crap that's in here. I hate to say it. You know, the, the numbers are incorrect. And if there's one mistake I can understand, month after month after month of mistakes, missing numbers, and well, there's no bad AR detail on here of missing funds or, or stuff that's carried over to 2015, how can we sit here and do an accurate budget for 2015 when we don't even have correct numbers for 2014? Okay. And I'm going to come, Ed, you had something to say before we go back to Mike. Um, I wish that there were uh, an efficient answer like uh, Representative Avalina, Avalani is uh, suggesting, but I don't think there is because we have made the recommendation that we get an administrator and because we cannot administer, administrate the system. Um, we can make recommendations, but I would rather do what we're doing, identify the problems, stay on top of the issues, make sure that the numbers for this year are right, um, and um, have a passel of recommendations for the administrator when he, <coughs> when he or she comes in. Okay. Thank you. I understand your position. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, let's go back again to the appropriations subcommittee that we had at the beginning of the year um, and system functionality in the, the business office ACS system. There were many questions about um, whether the system would alert you to the fact that uh, you were appropriate, uh, approaching the maximum appropriation amount for a particular line item. Um, you know, at, you know, if you expend 80 percent of your line item, does it flag it? Does does it appear in a different color? Do, do you get a report? Can you eat this? And we didn't get a real good answer. But at the same time, we um, saw that. Uh, we paid someone to take the information out of the system and put it into an Excel, Excel spreadsheet, only to hear that, you know, the next week that, oh, the system now can do that, and then to hear a few weeks later from Commissioner Miller, who talked to the vendor, that the system has had that capability since 2003. So one of the <coughs> things we talked about in the Appropriations Subcommittee was going through the IT committee and bringing in the system vendor and let's talk about what functionality the system does have because you know it seems to me that in terms of the representative's point that you know maybe we're using the ACS financial system in a, a five-year-old, eight-year-old mode and there is functionality there that we are not utilizing, and that certainly seems to be the case in at least the uh, 
uh, issue of the Excel spreadsheets, and maybe who knows what other issues. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I just want to talk to Ed's comment. Um, I just disagree a little bit with them. Um, it shouldn't be <coughs> our job to go line by line with um, on the revenue guidelines for to find mistakes where we pay people. Um, some people get paid very good money to input this data. Um, we pay Paul and she does it seamlessly and we go across the street and there's months of mistakes. Somebody needs to be held accountable. And I don't um, disagree with that and I'm not saying that uh, uh, we need to... I'm saying we need to find a way to get from here to there. And, Agreed. And, and I don't know that um, um, that we can uh, we can mandate the change or we should mandate the change until uh, an administrator comes in to take responsibility uh, in a way that um, will integrate with the system that we've got. I, I totally hear what you're saying. Okay. And, I, and I, I think we're fine on that. No, we're fine on that. It's just, there was just one more. Okay. Um, I think there's two people in this room that should be able to come up with a plan either to present to us or the administrator on how to move forward. If they start to work on it now, they'd be able to have a, a pretty good plan by the time this rolls around with the new administrator and, and all of us sitting in the same room. We wouldn't have to wait till July, then meet with them in August, and then we're in September before we ask them to do a program. There's no reason to ask them for it now, and hopefully by next budget season, January, we'd have something to work with. Mm -hmm. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. Bill, do you have anything at this point? I have a couple of just sort of a crazy thing. Would we, if we went into any of this, would we need a separate license for software? This could be done in Excel. Okay, my the um, I I don't think that's I don't um, yeah I think I think that can be worked out, Bill. But I, I don't want some discussions to be centered on um, what a cost might be to do that. Well, I agree with that I just because we're I mean we're finding things that are hundreds of thousands of dollars off from what we believe and mm -hmm. ten thousand here and there, so. I'm not advocating for just blanketly spending money, but I like the idea of moving forward a recommendation to the subcommittee, asking them to look into this, and they will report to the commissioners or whomever it is should report back to us. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. What I do see, and what this exercise this afternoon for two hours has pointed out, that we have a problem with the interface with the business office, and it's a problem. Absolutely. So if over, if over the majority of our employees come from here, and I would assume the majority of money coming in and even more debt going out is generated from here, I would feel much, much more comfortable if, if it was being held in-house here. And I think to have the discussion, to even just go out for a proposal to whoever ADP is about this, and to find out that thing. I don't see that being a big time-consuming thing. They'll generate a report. And um, I, I, I think it's really worthy of us because, you know, we can't be sitting in 2000, you know, we can't be seeing the third quarter of this year and, and seeing, because I, I can tell you historically, and Dave and I have been around for a long time, historically, there, there's some things that you never know. Where, where that money's coming from, the pro share money and how much it is, we've never known that. No one could ever explain it. But no one could ever explain to my satisfaction when we've sat through subcommittee meetings, which we have for years, that when I look at income, income always shows up to be the same number. If, it's, if we're at a quarter, it's showing up as 25%, it's showing up as 50%, it's showing up as 75%. And it's showing up at the end of the year, oops, in some places. That, that, that practice has to come to an end. And it seems to me that, you know, Paula, through her office here, is able to generate more timely reports. So, um, so I, I, I think let's, let's go back. We, we had a motion, and let's see if we can uh, pull that together. We'll just simply do a vote and we'll move on. Point of order. It might be helpful or appropriate if the motion were to ask the commissioners 
to direct us to do whatever it is we would like to do. I appreciate that, but uh, the delegation will make the motion. Uh, and I think okay. I think the delegation will make the motion to, to ask, and then if if the commissioners so say that you can't do that, then we'll get a response. That's that's my feeling. And uh, if we could restate the motion. Sure. Uh, ask Howard and Paula to come up with a plan to make the nursing home self-sufficient. Accounting. Accounting-wise. Who? Cool. Payroll. Payroll. Basically almost breaking them off from uh, all the redundancies that we have to go through. Cafe income. Cafe, so yeah, cafe income. If they needs to be transferred from the jail, I mean, that can be done internally. Uh, that was not. And yes, just sir. clarification. So yeah. relative to payroll, relative to all of those things that are currently intertwined, right. you would like to know what the possibility is of, of separating those out. Correct. Would this also cover the potential cost for them to find out what it would cost for another agency to do the, the checks? Would also, I think, are we expecting I think, them to think, find I out think, about the 7%? Yeah. I think that, that would fall in on what 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 we're paying for uh, debit credit card mm -hmm. fees and uh, the payroll component. It may turn out that we are doing payroll so efficiently it's not going to matter, but it would it would draw over half of that payroll right out of the system, which I have to believe would free up a lot of time in the business office for things that um, mm -hmm. that the commissioners believe they should be. So, yes, Ed. I'm going to vote for the motion um, because I think it will move us in the right direction. I don't necessarily think that it is the right answer um, because the right answer is sorting out our accounting system in general. Um, but I think this highlights an issue and it, and it may be the answer. So, um, and, and I feel bad that uh, we may be recommending, and the commissioners might support uh, giving more work to Howie and Paul. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you. So, um, are we are we of the same mind here where we are with this motion? The secretary have some idea where we're. Hate to give you do another time. Do you have a, a a date in mind? Because I hate to read minds. Can you tell us. Sixty days. Ninety days. End of the summer. End of the summer. We I, we know you're working on the AR, so I don't want to add I'm, any more. But my experience is that if something isn't done in 60 days, it's going to take the same amount of time. Uh, 60 days. I mean, it seems to be a, I mean, a, a sure. good working window for just about about anything. I was thinking 45. So I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking 45. It's nice to have a 15 day. <laughs> okay, 60 days. Paul, what do you think? That's fine. Sure. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, the subcommittee, say about aye. 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 The um, motion passes unanimously, four to, four to zero. Okay. Um, I have one more, please. Are we done or? <laughs> no, let's go, let's, let's go with your item. Um, uh, I just wanted to know what um, the nursing home pays for county services. Uh, like business office or HR, all these redundancies have a cost that uh, must come out of here somehow. Um, and it wasn't on the expenditure sheet of where it goes. So. The only thing is part of payroll. We pay part of, in our budget, is part of Kathy Gary's payroll. Part of the business office. And the other and part is the outdoor maintenance. Outdoor maintenance. Right. So mm -hmm. we have two items to go. Where would yeah. that be on the expenditure line? So I. In no, administration salary, and I think legal is the allocated expense too. Isn't it? Is well, it's, that covers our cost reports, but that also covers fees for union negotiations and but it's any case. I, I don't think it is from um, allocated. Out. If we get the bill, and if it says the CLAR and negotiations, we give it to you. you it's a okay. question of getting. Getting twenty five hundred dollars and saying fifty percent. Yeah, her salary we, would be incorporated. We in actually figure. try to charge it we based pay on half the hour salary. Rate. Out of our budget. All All budget. So, so no. we have, so you have legal that's coming out. You have a business <laughs> office component. I have a follow up, Mark, when you're done. Yep, and we have outside maintenance. 
I think uh, septic is uh, is another one. Mark. Okay, water sewer. Water sewer. And propane. Well, that would be. Yeah, that's an apportioned. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's broken down. Uh, I would ask for a meter on that. That's that's just silly. Okay, Lena, where were I? Um, so salary. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know if you guys brought on the expenditure budget worksheet. Um, it says salary administration. There is no line item to break out for what they pay um, the business office, um, especially if they're paying us out a, a flat salary. Is it a stipend? Is it included in the Social Security medical? I'd like it broken out so we know what we're paying for that. Please. That's fair enough. So we'll request that. I can pull this. I can we, outside maintenance right is an, no, outside no, maintenance is an easy one because that's showing up under public works. Water and sewer is being broken out now, whether it's whether it's the right number or wrong number, but it's being broken out. And on the legal side, the commissioner is telling us that if it, if it's a bill for the nursing home, it's apportioned. It's direct. It's direct expense at that point. So at some point in the future, if you were to take over, legal expenses would be under your house. It, it makes sense, although there will always be some services that are shared. Sure. Right? And and they they would need to be, be allocated. Mark? Yes, David. Paul, or is it? I have a, a vague recollection that some person in the business office, some portion of their salary is allocated to the nursing home. Kathy Gary. I, I could be wrong. It is Kathy Gary. Okay. Half of her payroll. Oh, okay. So could we have that broken up? Mm -hmm. Please. So we would know, so we can compare apples to apples if there's a charge from ADP of a certain amount per week or something, we'd be able to offset it with not having okay. to pay out yep. a separate salary line item. Phil? No, this is workable, but I'm just curious, how does this all fit into the uh, new legislation that would require if we have shifts in <coughs> line items? As we make these adjustments, what will happen as considering which your bu which the budget was passed if this is all adjusted, there's going to have to be some major shifts in all this stuff. Right. How do we address that? I believe we're heading there, and that's that has to happen before we get to uh, September. Okay. Yep. I, the process that I believe we're in is we're trying to find out how far in the hole we sure. are. Yep. And then our projections that we've made for a budget going forward, what needs to be adjusted. Yep. I think it's, it's an easy fix. I mean, every system they know anything else? That concludes my I hate to, I hate to see you closing up here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm just gonna take it. <laughs> I think, though, that with, with, uh, with the McCarthy law, the only thing that's going to happen is we have to report to you people, and you people okay it. So, as so long as you're okay, we just shift it. Yeah, okay. So, there'll be a paper trail for all the money guys. So from the subcommittee, is there anything else we, we thought today that we'd accomplish that we haven't got to? Did you discuss this? Um, yeah. Okay. You shouldn't leave the room, man. Uh, even I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll follow up on yeah. um, it. It was presented in the context that there are some numbers were, were, were took the committee and everybody by surprise. So now we're introducing management tools that are related to the finances that will give you indication early on. Good. All right. Glenn? Um, I'll, I'll gladly leave it for our, our next delegation meeting, but um, you know, I, I uh, again think it's it would be a great value to have our financial system vendor come in. Um, I'm sure we have a maintenance contract with them. They could come in, uh, spend a few hours, see how the business office is using the system, and then let us know, uh, you know what system functionality there is and isn't. You know what system functionality we are not making use of that would possibly be a benefit to us. Do you, do you still have a functioning uh, IT subcommittee? There is, uh, there is a county <coughs> IT subcommittee. Do you think we need to form an IT committee of the delegation? Or, but I, I would think it would be better off through... Through the IT, that was our recommendation at the uh, appropriation subcommittee yeah. that it be done through the IT committee. But, but I, I think the IT committee, we, uh, I don't know if we need a recommendation from here, we'll handle it at our next meeting, which is what, the 22nd, but right. I, I think your point's well taken, that we bring the vendors in, and that shouldn't be at a fee for us to have them come in and 
I know every time I sit down with my insurance agent, they show me something I don't have that costs me more. So exactly. I would I would think that uh, <laughs> they could come in. So I think I think that's a good idea. The whole interface issue is is very important. Howard, is there something you thought we were going to take up today that we haven't? No, I think we've covered it all and more than I expected. And Mr. <laughs> Chairman, um, by August fifteenth, you say that uh, we need to have any changes that we're going to make to the budget um, uh, that's just that's just a goal in my mind well and that makes okay. sense um, so relative to the budget that we proposed and approved um, we're going to make changes we're going to make recommendations for changes in that correct right so uh, when are we going to do that uh, yeah I'm just uh, besides finding the issues um, that's the other piece that we need to be ready for. Do you want to talk about that, or? Well, do you want to uh, uh, more so as setting a date, or what? What was your comment, Leo? Because we do need to go to the next step. But I think we need some a little bit of time here to handle with numbers coming in and so forth. Okay. So why don't we tentatively set um, a meeting into June? Should we wait for June for the second for the second quarter to end? Which would be when? June. June thirty. No, yeah. Okay. Okay. So so you're not gonna get that until beginning of July, mid July. Well, why don't we, why don't we pencil in that we're gonna try and meet after the week after the fourth? None of us are going to have a chance to raise our heads right through that. So maybe by, I don't have a calendar. Yeah, here, sir. How about somewhere around the 12th or somewhere in there? What does that fall into? The 10th is a Friday. Okay. 6th is a Monday. Why don't we shoot for the Friday on the 10th? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we? July. No. Oh, yeah, no, the 10th. Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait. No way. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, that probably um, won't for anybody. Does uh, I'm open for suggestion. Then. Um, I would be. It would be easier for me to do a Monday than a Friday. Okay. So is the 13th possible? Not afternoon again. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I like afternoon. I get to work. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we're saying that July 13th. Yep. And we'll go for two o'clock. Thank you. So we should know what our surplus is by then, so we should be in pretty good shape. Well, Holly gave us this nice handout last week. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that or not. Well, we have first quarter revenues. Oh. Is that the way you want to go, Mark? Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was hoping that we... Let's, let's talk about that briefly. show that we're on the we're continuing downward trend. Um, can I ask you another thing while we're waiting? Yeah. Does anybody have a full idea of where the money was from left over from the nursing home that was built who were actually at at that number? Because yeah, at one point we had a million, then we had a half a million, then we found this. Does anybody have any idea where we're at with that number? I think off the top of my head it's about five hundred thousand dollars. We had a million two, we spent just over five hundred thousand dollars to take the two wings right. down. Maybe it's maybe it's uh, three quarters of a million, but it's somewhere in the area of five to seven hundred thousand. So if we could on if we could on our, our notes, Howard, if you wouldn't mind the inquiry to the commissioners to the business office where where that amount is. Yeah, because yeah, somewhere it says we've used up all that bond money, and then I said red. No, somewhere. there's yeah, no, there's yeah. there's still there's still money there. And part in part, my understanding in that five hundred thousand. Um, 
is that there was monies expended to uh, close up the old building after we did the demolition, <laughs> and there were monies expended to um, make improvements to the laundry, and there was money spent for uh, right. patching the roof. Right. So we're going. We're going to. We're going to need. We're going. We're going to. But that was that was done within the. It was done within no. that. Right. So part parts of that money was expended to that. So no. so when 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 you hear a number, of the five hundred thousand is a conglomerate of all those things, mm -hmm. and yep. it's not just what we paid to take down. And, and I would say, as an agenda item, if we can put a note for our uh, July meeting, um, to come to grips with the. Uh, Demolition of the nursing home were beyond our dates, and uh, when the proposals were to come back to us, so we're going to have to take that up as a subcommittee to come up with a recommendation. All right, Leon, did you have what you wanted to find there, or ask Howard to report on that? No, I have. I have to have a couple questions. I'll answer. Okay. On the first quarter revenues that we got last week uh, and expenditures. Yeah. You guys ready? I don't have it. But I, I memorized the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, page three. Yeah. No, it's page three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> page three. You know, I think alike. <laughs> um, they're, they're calling revenues at 2.492 million. And on the mm -hmm. revenue sheet from the ACS tells me 2.295. There's a reason for the difference, although I, I don't have those numbers. The biggest, the biggest reason is that we included in italics numbers of, of money that we expect to get that we haven't received. Right. ACS is only going to report what was actually received because we didn't want to distort the budget by showing getting a million dollars in pro-share money and having July looking great and, and distorting it. But the numbers that are our estimates are in italics. Mm -hmm. And and that'll be different. Those those two numbers, <laughs> pro-share and, and the bed tax, the MQIP, uh, won't be reflected in the ACS ones. Correct. And, and, and as far as I can see, that there is no line for pro-share monies that come in on this sheet either. Because it's actually, ACS includes it in their Medicaid room right. So it, it's up, it would say it was at the top. Correct. Wouldn't it be diligent to have it broken out separately? Which is why we did it. <coughs> which is why you guys do it, which is why I because like it. Because it's, <laughs> it, well, because it's so significant and it's so different in character than the, the <coughs> Medicaid. For, for management purposes, for accounting reasons, uh, accountants will treat things differently than managers will. So we're trying to give you a, a managerial approach that's, that's actually helpful. Correct. No, I, 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 I know where you're going with this. And if I may, Mark? Yes. Um, line 45 says quality assessment bed tax MQIP $363,940. On your sheet it says three twenty six one sixteen. Right. Because we're looking at the state proposing to reduce it from last year. Wow. So now we're hopeful that isn't going to happen and that our budget figure might be low. But we, we try to budget and this is the number that was presented and approved by the commissioners. The commissioners <coughs> took a, a like approach and, and taking a, a lower revenue estimate rather than a higher one. So okay. hope, we hope we're wrong. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll come back to this. That's okay? I can tell you. I don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was good enough. But as, as a general question, we're, we're, are we trending better, more income, collected income? In 2015 than we were in 2014. Well, the only good news to be had is that as bad as our revenue <coughs> numbers were, we, we spent a whole lot less. So we're favorable to budget by $72,000. Our revenue is down, but our expenses are down. Some revenue expenses will always be in tandem, um, therapy being the, the notable one. When our therapy revenues are down, our therapy expenses are down. But for the first quarter, we our expenses were down more than we expected, um, but our, our revenues were down. But we're 72 to the good relative to budget, 72,000 to the good relative to budget. And we're, we're, we're coming up on our, our half year, 
have changes happened with Genesis that are producing something, or is that still something that might happen in the future? No, it's actually happening, and you can and actually it's probably you can see that more graphically on the on the charts. A lot of that, the first two pages, really apply to Genesis, and um, well, in general, census being on chart one is is trending, you know, much better than last year. So we're trending favorably that way, and skill days. Are, are trending. Uh, it, we, we, we crossed the point in March where we're now outperforming last year. And perhaps the more significant one is page three, where Genesis is significantly outperforming last year, where right from January continuing through, where our, our Med B units are up significantly. Okay. So we're, we're, we're trending favorably. We're not, it's not where I'd like to see it. But where it's still better than significantly better than last year. And if I could, yes. Um, so, why revenues down? How do you? Is it because of uh, lower reimbursement from Medicaid? Well, it's if we look at the significant differences, um, it's still even though we're doing better than last year, our estimates. The estimates that the delegation pretty much endorsed were from 2013, no, I an exceptional yeah. year. Yeah. Um, so that so that where we are is the three months variance from budget is from a very high budget number. Um, if we look at three months three months actual, um, oh, I think I'm off by it. I think I discovered a, a problem there. Um, when we're not, we would not be tracking that much off. I don't want to generalize, but if we looked at commissioner numbers, three months actual total. I don't want to generalize without putting it right to the to the. To well, the we test. did look at two years. We just we picked thirteen, but we used twelve and thirteen, which were in essence the fourteen were good years. Right, and then we went down to fourteen. Fourteen, fourteen was a a, a sub part. We went by two good years is when we made that. Exactly. Is it case mix? Case mix index is big. Our, our, our Medicaid reimbursement rate stayed about the same. We're hoping that that's going to increase with changes that have been made by the governor. Um, occupancy has been, been higher, but, but right. it actually is case mix. When you look at that chart, the, the top chart of the, the page, page two is the most significant one in case mix. What, it, what it's suggesting is that last year, while our overall census was down, our skill days in January and February were exceedingly high. Very mm -hmm. favorable case mix, not a favorable overall census. How about the part where we were anticipating the number of private pay? Is that kept to, to where we thought last year, or did that not actually materialize the percentage? But it, stayed, it stayed roughly the same, a little bit down, the hard part that we have is a matter of mission. You know, when we have people that, that want to come in, who do you give preference to? The, the, the person who has no other place to go to or the, or the private pay? We are a county home, so we do lean pretty heavily to, to helping people who, who need help the most, including financial help. And that's a, so we're, we're somewhat limited. We are pushing the Medicare admissions, the skilled admissions, because that benefits equally people with money and people without money. It benefits the county because Medicare is paying for it. Whether you're, whether you're rich or poor, we benefit by it. So we, we, we think from a mission base that we're serving a broader, broader portion of the population by pushing for skilled admissions than we are for private. There's, there's an opportunity there, but it's a, but we, we have not pushed it. We, we, we encourage our admission people to try to balance the best they can, if, if, if they can, to, you know, because they, they realize that no money, no mission. It, it would be useful, I think, in this kind of uh, uh, chart to track privates as well. So uh, before, before I go to, to Dave, um, Representative Algren, Two years back, when we were going through the process and the discussion was that the policy of the commissioners at the time for admissions was first person up came through the door. 
and then we started talking about the advantages of, of keeping a, people, a bed available for rehab and skilled care. And we had, uh, my understanding is that we had had a change of policy with the commissioners that would enable that to happen. And our philosophy was, with Representative Algren, that a bed could be open 25% of the time and still make money. Exactly so. Okay. Had, it was 41%. 41%. So did, did that phase in and it's not working and we're phasing that out or is that still part of our mix? That's still part of the mix. And in fact, what we have, again, posted on the wall out there, our census right now is 102. So that if we got a call right now from Huggins Hospital or from Frisbee saying that there was an admission coming in tomorrow, we could say yes and be able to accept them. Some days it'll mean, hopefully, now where we haven't been, and, and, and it shows on page one, you know, we, we want our average census to be over. In a perfect world, our, our average census would be a hundred, a little slightly over 102 because you have some down days. We're not ideally there, but Jen, Jen Chiavacci, our admission coordinator, is doing a great job. It, we're, we're, we're giving it a full court push. You know, have authorized overtime if maintenance needs to stay late, but separate room so we can get somebody in tomorrow. That extra day's revenue is worth that, you know, hour and a half, two hours to do it. So, so I think it's been a little bit of a cultural shift among staff to realize that we need to push hard and heavy, but we're getting there. But we are pushing for the Medicare part. Yes, one, one more question. I'll let everyone go. And I still have that, or Dave, I apologize. The, we have 103 beds. My, from, from looking before our census, usually around 101. Why, and today we're at 102. Shouldn't our goal be to have 102 all the time with 103? It seems to me that we're holding back, we might be holding back a bed that should be filled. It's, it isn't because we've been holding it back, but we have been under full. And, and we, we can't accept 101. We need to be at 102 and at 103 40% of the time. I mean, that's the... So that's our, our, our goal is to be at 102, if not 103. Correct. But last year, or up to this point, we, we've been averaging... I have a note here of 100. Am I, am I last year? That last year. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't know for sure, but our first quarter last year was was horrible. We had I mean, it, it, it dropped. Okay, but if but if we if we have 103 beds and and we we drop down tomorrow to 102, then we ring a bell and we go through and try and find someone for 102. That's and that's exactly what we're doing now. And we've okay. been. All right. Thank you, Is it David. You know, only last week. Um, much to the surprise of the commissioners, you told us that the reason the contract services were down was because Genesis um, was short-handed. Last year they were down considerably. And we had lunch today with <laughs> a young lady that worked for Genesis, and she's a per diem going around filling in for them. Are they still in, in this situation where they can't provide us the services so that we can collect the money? We're missing a, a, a part-time physical therapy assistant. They had engaged somebody and she backed out last week and we are still lacking a permanent um, program manager. We have, we have an interim program manager full-time and, and there's nothing the matter with, with, with that, but our own would be, be, be better. But we're only right this year, we're only down that half-time position. There were times last year where we were down and sometimes two speech, you know, therapists and PT. We were there were times when it was, it was pretty desperate, and and that just wasn't acceptable. Is it time to investigate other agencies that do this? I think it's time for a routine. You know, w without even speaking directly to Genesis Performance, they've been the exclusive, you know, contractor since 2003. I think it behooves us to periodically put before the commission is, you know, alternative proposals. I think it keeps everybody honest to, you know, not that it has to go with the bid every year. Um, I think the contract should never be for more than a year, but it could be for multiple year renewals. I, my hope is that in July to be able to have, the, or sooner than that, to have requests for proposals to go out. We have a number of people interested. Should we have in this proposal some kind of an escape clause? Oh, do we have that now? 
I mean, I, I don't think we used it. If we were down, if we did as badly as we did last year, we couldn't have used the escape clause. We didn't have the escape clause till September, or October. Oh. So we, when it came from what is at the first opportunity to renegotiate the contract, that was the part that we, we put in, so that we now have the ability to to separate pretty much on 30-day notice. Okay. They don't want them to say anything. Just just to clarify, so we've had the same physical therapy people since 2003? Correct. How often has that contract gone to bid? It hasn't. Are you able to do that on your own or is that part of the commissioner's job? That Because it involves expense over $5,000 a year, it's a commissioner approval. But but you have taken that from a year-to-year -year contract to a month-to-month, -month, is Correct. that what that was? So it would seem that it's time to go out to bid. I wanted to preserve the right to be able to go out to bid if, in fact, the commissioners decide that's what we should I'd, do. I'd say it's long overdue. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I don't remember the details, and I'm sorry about that, but I, I think maybe Mr. Chimmer, I sent you a copy of a note uh, or an article about the a governor reinstating some nursing home funding. Um, how does that help our revenue situation, or does it for 2015? We will know by a week from Friday. The, the okay. state, the state, with the, and something that I find to be very surprising for the state, they're sending out a check, and they've told us that it should be out next week, which is yep. remarkably quick action. Yeah. They haven't told us what it's going to be. <laughs> Anything's better than nothing, though. Right. But we're expecting it to be a big check. Follow up, Mark? Yes. Uh, uh, and where would that, how would that be accounted for? 2014? 2015? 2015. It would be the technical part when they set the rates, for, they set the rates in September for January, for, <coughs> for starting January 1st, for residents that we have in residence January 1st for Medicaid. Those rates were set in October uh, or September. And they, Health and Human Services did not include carryover money that they knew they had. So this, this would apply to 2015. Okay. Is it, only, it, it will apply to residents over here January 1st. Okay. okay. One, one more? Please. So that would fall under our, our revenue line, right? Correct. Could, could, could we have a, a separate line for that so we could keep track of that through the year? Do you, well, we have, that's, that's just the rate adjustment money. That, right? change, so that changes be, the rate per day that we get for Medicaid okay. persons. We just want to, okay. Yeah. So, so, that's, so, we have a, <coughs> so we don't plan on that money for next year. Well, no, this money, well, we, well, well we actually, actually expect to be our Medicaid forward, rate. possibly. Yeah, there are two. Th our Medicaid rate, so it will be. Yeah, but I think, I think we're thinking of carrying some of that back on the cross shares. So if we get one in one area, we're going to lose in another area, so. There's, there is a relationship between the two. If the higher our, our Medicaid rate is, right. the low, it isn't dollar for dollar, but it does, it will tend to drive our pro share down. I, I think if we kept that <coughs> somehow separate, so we wouldn't expect that for revenue of next year. I think the safest way is going to do that by controlling the pro share money, because the Medicaid rate is the rate per day, and that's it, driven by case mix, it's driven by the carryover, and it's driven by the the budget neutrality factor, whatever they have to do to keep it even with the, the federal money. Okay, but then I don't understand. We're getting a chunk of money, but it, it's going to impact the daily rate? Correct, starting right. January 1st. Just so January 1st. is there a chunk of money and a better rate, or is there a chunk of money which is left over? This is generated. This is going to be for the, the rate that will actually continue through June 30th. But we will be expecting in July the pro share money. Right. The MQIP money comes quarterly, and we haven't heard whether that's going to be reduced by 25 percent or not. Yes. Um, and the pro share money, you guys don't see that until the check comes to the business office. I don't yeah. see it until it shows up in my. That's correct. We'd have no idea really know what it is until it arrives. Okay. I don't see that Yeah. It's just another gen journal entry. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Anyone else? Anything else? You can have on. Motion to adjourn. I, I have one more, Mark, if that's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I was, I was trying to get you there. Go <laughs> do, do we, do we have, have any idea of the. Um, I hate to use it as bad debt for 2014 or un uncollectible bills or un something that's outstanding from 2014. 
that was included in the 2015 numbers that we were looking at yet? Or who would we be in contact to get those numbers from? Well, I, they, I don't think anything is included in these reports you get as far as what's outstanding. So I don't know what. So if there was bills, you know, <laughs> last year we built 7912. Right. Let's say there's 100,000 still outstanding. Mm -hmm. There should be a line item on here that's saying that there's a hundred thousand outstanding. Right, there's no line. There's no in nothing. This so I mean, there should be some that. type in that system. In ACS. So we should have some type of mm -hmm. a sure. AR detail. Right. To tell us, all right, well, we're expecting this revenue. We didn't get it, so we should lower next year's revenue by a, a certain amount. And if it comes in, it's a great bonus. If it doesn't, we're not relying on it to move forward. forward. And that's all I think I we've upset the system enough here. We did. And I think you're right. I, 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 I think the emotion mark. Okay. I think the people who, yeah. will, who view this and everything else should be pleased that we're working to resolve this for good work. The taxpayer. And I'll just I'll just throw in that um, I I treated our meeting as as a uh, as a workshop, very informal. So I'm sure no one had an issue with not being called by title, but. Not a tennis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, for filming.